Welcome back everyone. Man, last week was just one of those weeks where everything just seemed to go wrong. So, Mrs. Peddler and I, we packed up and we went to Pops Acres for a three-day weekend to just unwind and relax. But we do have big plans for Pops Acres and I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. In the last video, I did get the mailbox finished. But when I was filming that part, I didn't catch it and my GoPro was set to time lapse. With the video being in a time lapse, it just didn't sync up with the audio and everything. Anyways, with all that aside, I'd still like to show you this jig that I was trying to make in the last video. You know, the thing that started the whole last video. This jig is real easy to make. It's just a piece of wood and one of these clamps. This one here is made by Milescraft. All you got to do is measure the height of your fence, get you a board, cut it that same height, drill you a 5 16 hole. At least that's what this jig works with is 5 16 Not saying all of them do. Now this board here for your jig, it can really be any length. It actually could only need to be half this size here, but this here's the size I picked. So all you do is take this, put it on there, and you tighten up the screw but you want to bring it back up here. If you leave it down here, you're going to get bound up in between the fence and the blade, okay? You don't want that. So you put that on there. Now I know the board on my jig here is three quarters of an inch wide. It's good enough for woodworking. Now for metal work, it's probably off a little bit, but we're woodworking here, okay? Now knowing that this jig is three quarters of an inch wide, you just add that to the length you're going to cut. For the mailbox, I need a 17 and a half inches. So, I would bring my fence down to 18 and a quarter. Right there. I don't trust my fence or the measuring thing on there. But most of the time it's right. And I look at this right here and guess what? It's at 18 and a quarter. Yeehaw. Since I don't need to cut another board for my mailbox, I'm just going to use this board in the video, you know, just to show you how all this works. First thing I usually do is, is I do a square cut on here, you know, on the end, you know, just to make sure it's square. I don't know where this board come from. I don't know if this end right here is square or not. So I always make a square cut. Now I know I got my fence over here. It's gonna be 17 and a half from the board. 18 and a quarter from the fence because you know that three quarter in there. So as you see here, I got this butted up against my jig and what happens when I move this and I come down here and I'm going to cut it. This right here, it's not against the fence. It's not going to get bound up and turn the saw on again. Always let your blade stop before you pick up this piece. Because if it's going, you pick it up right here and it gets in there, it can fly up at you. And that's all I wanted to show you in the last video was how I was going to save time and not have to pull the miter saw out here to cut that board 17 and a half. I was just going to use this stop block thing here on my fence and cut that board. But wait, there's more uses to this jig. So let's just say you needed this here and a bunch of two inch pieces. I don't know what you'd need them for, but you know, just say you need something two inches. So what you would do is you'd bring your fence back down here. You need two inches, but this is three quarters, so you add that three quarter on. So you bring this back to two and three quarter. There we go. Since I don't trust the measurement, See that one there is a little bit off. Down there it was on. So I'll bring that up to two and three quarters. There we go. So now I can put this in there, turn my saw on. Now watch. Was that cool or what? I have six pieces that are two inches long. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. Throw them in the burn pile probably. But I'm just showing you that this little jig right here, 
can help you do such things. That way you don't got to bring, you know, maybe you don't have a miter saw. Table saw is all you have. I had a table saw for a year before I had a miter saw, and I didn't know this here. What, what I was doing is I was like measuring two inches on the board and coming up here to the blade and cutting it. Then cutting another two inches and cutting it. I ain't got time for that. I saw this online and thought, wow, I could have used that back when I didn't have a miter saw. But I have a miter saw now. But I actually think this is more accurate because I have a cheaper low-end miter saw. And so this works better. So easy, even a peddler can do it. Okay, I mentioned about big plans at Popsakers. Well, I really can't go into it right now. I'd love to. I know it's going to happen. I'm going to have to pull my big motivation pants up and really work on this because there it's a big end goal. I, I really wish I could tell you, but it raised too many questions. And so I'm just going to leave it at that. The, the way I look at it, it's like Tetris. You know that game Tetris where... The little, you gotta move the shapes and fit them in to fill up the lines before it goes over the, you know, before you get to the top. Well, we're kinda up there at the top of the screen. And we got pieces that gotta fall into place. And we can make those pieces fall into place, but we also gotta get that row to be the same color. And when that row is in the same color and that piece is in there, boom, that line goes out and we get closer to the bottom. The bottom is my goal. I wanna get to the bottom but they gotta get these pieces up here all working. So I'm working on that behind the scenes. A lot of researching, a lot of text messages to people I know. You know, did a little, we actually did a little traveling this last weekend. It was relaxing, but we, we traveled to look at a couple things, you know, just to, we got, you know, we had to find out the ballpark that we wanted to play in, and we wanted to see if we could play there, if that makes sense. I think we can play there but we got to get the Tetris pieces all in. Once I get closer to the bottom of the Tetris game, I'll start cluing you in. There might be some cool videos made on that. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But for right now, well, I hope for someone watching this jig, little jig idea will help you out. I didn't invent it. It's been around for years. You don't see all the videos out there, but you might come across mine and you'll see you know, you saw this, so now you can do it yourself. That's how I figure out things with this woodworking. I see it online and I either save it or commit it to memory or I'll just write it down so I can re remember when, oh yeah, I can go back to that. So you save this video, you know, or you could subscribe to this channel. That way you could always just come back to, you know, look, search for the video and remember how to make this jig right here. <laughs> just kidding. Well, hey everyone, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. I try to reply back to all the comments. Like this video, ring that bell. That way you'll get a notification of whenever I upload one of my piddling videos. Well, like in all my videos, you know what I'm gonna say. See ya. I'm just gonna have to really Pull my big motivation panties on, you know, that's stupid. <laughs>